I truly believe the best way to play Thither Rhythm is on the arcade cabinet, but I know that's not super accessible to most people, so I have the next best thing. The Fanta Palm controller. This thing is actually a custom made arcade stick and I'm going to show you the differences between this and the arcade cabinet and also the insides and the outsides and how I feel about the controller. The Fanta Palm controller is an altered arcade stick usually made for fighting games. Ash Huang, who is the creator of the stick, makes a lot of custom and unique builds used for fighting games and rhythm games. I have their info linked below, so definitely check them out. I have a few arcade sticks here, and some are custom built. The standard sticks that have been used for years have this kind of format with the joystick on the left and the buttons on the right. The hitbox has become more popular within the past few years though. Instead of a joystick, these four buttons represent your up, down, left, and right, almost like a d-pad. Because of that, you can hold two buttons at the same time that you would not be able to do on a standard stick, such as up and down or left and right. I did try to use the hitbox while playing through the rhythm. You can hit every arrow, including the diagonals, but because it's only one technical joystick, you can't hit any double arrows. Hello and welcome to the Fanta Palm Arcade Stick. This thing has so many buttons, I can't wait to press them all with you. But first, let's go over the differences between this and the arcade cabinet. You can see that the arcade cabinet sticks are a little bit more recessed. They also have an eight-way gate in them, so they're a little bit more sharp when you push your arrows. The Fanta Palm has a circle gate in it, so it's a lot more smooth when you're trying to push your arrows. I don't really have a preference here. They both kind of feel the same just because you're hitting arrows, you're not moving. It's not like a fighting game where you're doing half rotations or something like that. There is a little bit of recoil. So if you smack left, right, up, down too hard, it will recoil in the opposite direction and hit the opposite button after you're done. So you just have to make sure you have pretty good control over the stick when you're playing. The arcade cabinet does the same thing. So it's not something I'm not used to. We also have the button which you have the big buttons on the arcade cabinet. It feels different, but it doesn't feel bad. I feel like the buttons are a little higher than the arcade stick, but there's only so much you can do with the limited space here. There's also the buttons above the stick. These are your trigger buttons and your multiple buttons for when you actually have to push more than one button at a time or two or three or four or whatever. So these ones are actually really helpful. I love the placement for this because it feels very natural when I'm trying to hit a lot of extra buttons. There's also the buttons on the very top. They say left side, right side, so it's left side, the D-pad, and the right side. Whatever buttons correspond to the right side, so X, Y, A, B, triangle, square, whatever. There's the L and R3 and the switch share button on the right side, and then on the top you get your start, select, and home. I don't know how the layout technically works on PlayStation. I'd assume the share and the home button are like the home and I don't know, the touchpad. And then bonus points on the very bottom, there's this anti slip pad. I don't know if the stick that got modded originally had this. I feel like most arcade sticks don't have really good padding like this. So this could just be an added on feature. To open this up, all we have to do is take out these eight screws on the top. Warning, I don't know much about the insides of arcade sticks. I've tried to mod one once in my lifetime, so I, I just don't have much experience. So once the screws are off, we take the top up, and I'm actually really afraid to mess anything. Okay. That's fine. You just, you just gotta plug it back in. I'm too afraid to mess anything up, so I really don't want to open this much more. You can, you can do it, you pl plug it, there, there you go, there you go. I do love that the stick's a little recessed here, so you have these little things sticking out a little bit, I guess. So you can't see it here, I'll show it in a little bit, but the boards are actually hidden right down here. So I like that it's like really nice and sleek. These little holder things here, I actually use things like this on my wall to hold my wires if I actually do wire management, which I don't. If you're wondering what this orange box is, it's 
for when you put the wires in, there's actually a little slot in the back to put the wire, the USB in. So that way it's just not like flopping all around all the time. And then here, I'm going to try to get a closer look inside. Again, I was too afraid to open it bigger. I also don't know much about these kinds of things. So what I can tell are there's two boards in here. The little black one, I think, is the brook board that makes this stick compatible with PS5. Not all sticks are compatible with PS5. I actually had to pay a little extra to get that mod in there. I think the blue one is also part of the brook mod, but I could be wrong. If you're coming from the arcade cabinet, the transition from the cabinet to the stick is very natural. It feels a little different, but not in a bad way, just different. So if you're coming over from it, then it'll be super easy to pick up. Like I said before, where all of the buttons are located, it feels really natural to hit buttons when you have multiple buttons on screen to hit. Whenever I hit my doubles, I actually only hit with my right or my left hand and kind of go back and forth between those. After a few weeks with the stick, I feel like I'm playing better than I did on the Switch Pro Controller. I had a lot of problems transitioning from the arcade cabinet to the Pro Controller because the button presses are backwards. On the Pro Controller, I would use my thumbs for the analog sticks for the arrows and my fingers for the triggers to hit the presses. Whereas on the arcade cabinet, I would use my fingers for the arrows and my thumb for the presses. So I would mix up my arrows and my presses a lot just due to muscle memory. Overall, it was just such a natural transition for me to start playing with this stick. I'm not going to go back to controller anytime soon. I haven't even picked up a controller since I started using it. Back when I played See the Rhythm on my 3DS, I exclusively played on the touchscreen, so that was actually the first time using a controller. And while I picked it up really fast because the arcade cabinet, I had a lot of issues, so I'm super thankful to now have this controller, and I super recommend it to anyone who wants the arcade cabinet feel, but either doesn't have one or just wants to play the newer songs on the arcade cabinet, which we don't have, sadly. If you want to watch more gameplay, I have been streaming this every Thursday on Twitch. I will put my link in the description below. If you've used the Phantom Palm controller, definitely let me know. Do you think this is the definitive way to play moving forward? Or do you prefer the controller or even the touchscreen on the 3DS? Definitely let me know. And if you want to see more gameplay, I stream on Twitch every Thursday playing See the Rhythm, and that's S'mores Pop Tart. I also have the link in the description below. And that's it. I'll see you guys later.